Sutton's made the move, Sutton, flicking it into Larson, Larson, edge of the box, tries to play it into Larson, Larson's got a chance here, Larson in! Go, 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 go! Hi and welcome to another episode of the Rebel Podcast coming to you from the Balcony of Freedom on this uh, Friday evening on Prefontaine. <laughs> I forgot who I was. I'm Prefontaine and uh, as always I'm joined on the show. Actually the first time we've had Callum actually on the Balcony of Freedom since he's returned because last week we, we did our show out in the Burbs. Callum, how are you this evening? Good Pre. Good, didn't spill your drink this time, that's good. No, um, time and also our other regular host, uh, Frank... Hail, hail, Preet. Callum. Um, so we've given ourselves a good 24 hours to cool down after the events of um, uh, the uh, Juve game on Thursday morning Melbourne time. Um, so we thought we'd give ourselves a bit of a break, a bit of a breather to um, you know, have a good night's sleep and then come back tonight and have a bit of a discussion about what we thought about the game and, and I guess the club's overall performance in Europe. Um, but... Uh, but before we do, but before we do, um, let's uh, let's listen to a, an interview from Neil Lennon. Although I must admit, it doesn't load it up all the way. But anyway, we'll see so how it goes. Go. We'll see how we go. This is actually this is live, man. <laughs> right. Press place. Celtic manager Neil Lennon. That's as far as mine got. <laughs> oh. We'll add it in later. Why don't we try again? No, thanks for joining us, Neil. Um, two 0 on the evening. Was that a fair? Hey, was that a fair reflection, Neil, on the game tonight? No, I think uh, quality counts at the end of the day. I thought our our finishing at times let us down. Our build-up play was very good, and um, just our execution. You know, Ambrose again had a great chance with the header just after half time. That would have made it one-one, and who knows what would have happened. But just in the final third, for all our good play, you know, Sammy has flashed one across the goal, and you're expecting Gary to to be there to tap it in. And, and Buffon's made an unbelievable save from a deflective. Sh- Deflected shot, but um, on the night was it the fair result? You know, class tells in the end, and I think that's what happened over the two games. But a lot of young players that you've got in your squad, Neil. Uh, most of them have got no sort of experience at this type of level. Over the journey, the Benficas and the Barcelonas and the Moscows and this game, how much will they have learned? Well, I, I hope they've learned a lot. I hope that they move on with their careers. Um, they have done the club very proud. Of, you know, I'm very proud tonight. To yeah, that's all we're going to get, I think, out of Neil tonight. <laughs> Sorry. We're having some real technical difficulties here with the learning interview. I'll make it up. The rest of it, he said, yeah, I was pretty happy with it. Thanks, Guy, for whatever reason. Yep. Um, very proud of Celtic. Come a long way. What else did he say? Fans. Fans, wonderful fans. Love the weather. Very impressed with the snood he was wearing that evening. Yeah, he looked good, didn't he? He looked Italian. What was what was with? Why is Neil Lennon all of a sudden wearing a suit? I like it. I think managers should wear a suit. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm from the same era of Cluffy and Martin and Neil. I think a good tracksuit. Because you're playing sport, you're not in a bit, you're not not in the office. Yeah, but the difference is he's the coach throughout the week, but his job on sa- Saturday or Sunday or Wednesday or Thursday is to manage the team. You're a manager, you're not a coach anymore, so you should represent that. And wear a suit, and someone who wears a, like loves to wear a suit, Pre Fontaine. I would have thought you would like you would want him to wear a suit. Yeah, but when I come home at night, I like to. Yeah, but he's not. I like to get home. into my leisure wear. It is, he's not home. <laughs> but he does pick his days, doesn't he? Like he wears the suit. He All the Scottish, suit, the Scottish cap last week. Yeah, he yeah. doesn't wear the suit. That's the first one I've seen. He obviously rated that at the, you know, the big game, so. He wears it for the cup final. And it was ruined after about 10 minutes because it <laughs> hissed down on top of him. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't the best weather for a match, was it? No, it was perfect Glasgow weather. Mm, it was. Let's talk about the team lineup for a second. Um, are, we, are we done with Lenny's snood? Um, well, was the, that... the, only, the only problem with what Lenny wears day to day is the bloody... I mean, how tight are those pants? Those tracky pants? His tracky dacks? Yeah. Oh, they're tight. <laughs> well, you can see everything there. He's got a girth <laughs> and he likes to show it. Does the boy from Logan? It's like it's different. To like, remember when Mon first went to the Premier League and he wore? I think for the first like the first week, yeah, he wore this suit, uh, this tracksuit, which was like eighteen times too big for him. And you know, it got wet. I think he got more wet as it, as it went on. 
so I'll just keep getting bigger and bigger. So let us go on the other approach, and even his even his even his uh, his tricolour tracksuit top is pretty tight as well. Um, you were telling us, uh, you were telling me off air a couple of days ago that that was quite a big issue yeah. in Scotland. Yeah, well, I think everyone in Scotland knows about it, but we didn't. But pick up no on one it. knew about it. Collagate, because he put his collar up. Normally, he just wears it so it's zipped all the way up. That was two or three years ago, and ever since the tricolour, he's let the tricolour show on the on the inside of the jacket, like on the waist yeah. strip. And uh, and that was a massive deal. Like, that was a serious deal for people. I think it was actually written about in some papers. That's how pathetic Scotland is. Yeah. I did notice when, uh, like, I've been noticing, I've been watching the away games now where we've actually wore the black strip. Yeah. And because none of them actually, you talk about this, none of them really wear, wear the the um, the sleeves up. Yeah. But Stokes, he does. Stokes, you know, he's, because his dad hates the coin. Um, and he's, and he's, and he's, and he's a member of the, it's all right, he's a member of the, as an IRA? IRA. Right. Or Grimby Ed when they're at home. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. There's different rules for the songs. Can't he sing that there? Um, you know our cousin? He went to um, cousin Sean, uh, Kieran, cousin Kieran, cousin Kieran, who's never seen us lose at Sunny Park and seen some big results there. The three nil rank, uh, Sevco game. He's never seen us lose at Sunny Park. No, he's never seen us lose. Well, he's only been to Sunny Park. He's never seen us lose there. Does he not go to the away games? He's not a big time supporter. <laughs> he's not. Nor right. is cousin Sean, by the sounds of it. No, we'll talk Just about Just because that. you go to Turin doesn't make you, it doesn't redeem the fact that you haven't, you've been going shopping in fucking Brayhead when they've been playing at home. But uh, Kieran, they, uh, after, I think it was the 3 0 game when we beat the Huns 3 0. Yeah. And uh, he started, they started singing um, um, the, 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 the Celtic Symphony. And yeah. he started saying, ooh, ah, uh, up the rah. Right. And stuff like turned around and said, can't see that here, mate. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was in the director's box, or? Yeah. It was, it was excellent. Here we go. Dermot Desmond said to him, oh, you can't see that here. Um, right, so the team lineup was uh, um, Fraser Forster in goals, and we had uh, a back four of uh, Matthews, Wilson, uh, Victor, and Izzy. Um, and across the middle, it was Jamie, uh, Kale, uh, Charlie, and Joe Lidley and James was not in the first half. Huh? James came on in the second half. Yeah, that's, I was looking at that going, that's way too many players. That's twelve. <laughs> <laughs> that's twelve players. One, no two, three, four, four, five, half. six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, that's twelve. Sorry. Sorry, that's my fault. James you came on in. Uh, yeah, Commons. Commons <laughs> Jamie. Uh, George and Hooper and the subs that did come on, um, Ambrose came on for uh, Victor. At half time. Because he caught the late train. Because he caught the late train, which we'll talk about in a minute. James, uh, James, uh, whatever his surname is. Um, <laughs> Forrest. <laughs> Forrest. Forrester and Forrest, just excuse me the shits. Change your names. Just make up something else. Um, came on in the second half, and so did. Lassard. Uh, Lassard, who, is, who I like to refer to as Sammy with a blow wave, <laughs> came on. Um, and did nothing. And did, and did nothing. But the look, commentator dude, mentioned his name. I'm going, who the hell is Nui Nui? <laughs> It was Lasad. <laughs> That's right, Nui Nui. Um, so let's talk about the team selection. Victor in the um, centre back spot next to uh, Calvin Wilson. What are your thoughts on that one, Frankie? Well, it just shows you how far we've come professionally when, you know, if you happen to miss the bus, you don't get a game. I mean, that is, is bad. Like, they must be pissed themselves in Scotland with all the. Uh, People guessing if that was fair income or not, you know. I mean, why would why would the guy fly back from the Africans nations and play twelve hours after he's arrived in a you know vitally important game, for then to miss the game the following the return? Yeah, because he missed the bus. Also, Lennon said that that wasn't the reason. Um, we're never going to know, are we? No, but I mean, the thing is, ever since he's come back from the African nation, he has not had one good game. He's, no. He's been subbed before half time a lot, uh, two weeks ago yeah. or a week ago. Um, and then, uh, your biggest belief I mean, what does this guy have to do? His boots and everything are already in Turin. All he has to do is pack his Gucci bloody little wallet with his passport in it and go to the airport. No, Neil, sorry, go to Sonic Park because the bus takes him to the airport. Neil Lynn said all he had to do was get up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, right. that, that is pathetic. I just. It really is pretty bad, isn't it? So, actually, the back two, you know, Wilson and Victor worked really well. Yeah. That was under no pressure. They didn't, yeah. have, they didn't have much to do, really, did they? No, though? but they still played They still played well, and I loved the way Charlie was just patrolling in front of them. So, mm. I thought, the, you know, that 
back four, except for Izzy, played really well. Yeah. Well, I guess let's talk about Izzy while we're on Izzy. Um, I thought that at one stage, deep in the second half, you were going to kick the fuck out of the TV screen if Izzy put in... <laughs> in fact, I think he threatened, I'm going to work now if he puts in one more shit cross. Mm. This is, just before we spot it, this is also, uh, we've got a couple of guys tweeting us what they want to talk about. Yeah. And this is Craig... Um, What's his Twitter handle? Uh, Craig1888. Yep. Got a lot of followers. Uh, he asked, have to talk about Izzy's form or lack of it. Will he become good or have Sodic got a left back curse? Obviously alluding to the, you know, lean nailers of the, of the, you know, they play well for one year and then after that they... Shite. Play shocking. Oh, other than Danny Fox, who was just shite. No, that was shite. It was shite. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually thought that um, Izzy was actually starting to come good Would in the again? last three or four weeks. Mm. And then he just had this howler on mm. Wednesday night. It was... But it was... Whether he was part of the, the pre-match speech or not, I mean, did he miss something? Because, you know... He was getting 90% of the crosses. Mm. Matthews was, you know, the few balls that Matthews got were quality. Mm. They were low and hard, you know, where someone could get in the end of them. Yeah. Izzy's were, well, one he put over the bar. Like, yeah. But they were loopy. It was just pathetic. And he never... So why, but why did the rest of the players not say to him, look, can we not do that? And even Callum, you said half time, why doesn't he just go to the byline? Yeah. Which is what Georges did. Yeah. And, you know, we should have scored. Yeah. Well, that was a thing. He didn't go to the byline once. No, not and once. He was too scared to take him on, wasn't he? Uh, he? That's what it seemed like. Another thing was, um, when they put James Forrest on, and Forrest had a couple of nice touches early, after that he didn't really get much, didn't get the ball. And he's playing on the, he's like the, he was playing kind of, kind of central, but then on the right-hand mm. side. Mm. So if he's not getting the ball, someone has to pass it to him. And we just continually went to the left-hand side to give it to Izzy. There was one stage here late in the second half when he put in a shit cross. It was one that was high, wide and handsome. And you saw, I think I might have even remarked to you in the game, Joe Ledley looked across at him and he just he threw his arms down and mm. screamed at him like mm. it was... Uh, clearly something would have been said, but it just... It wasn't getting in. He's on the dope. He's on no the, doubt about it. Well, he loves God, so I don't, smoking know, it. I don't know what's going on. It's, it's, yeah. He thinks on the chronic. Bloody ass. And he has a young, he has a young child, Dad. Well, there's something wrong with him because... But he's been, I mean, he's been playing well in the SPL, but in most, I can't really remember in the, in the, in the UCL that he's actually played a, you know, a really good game. And even some of those... I don't think he's even playing in half those games. Yeah, well, that's... But even some of those games in the SPL where he's, he's had a good 15, 20 minutes, he actually hasn't had a really mm. good 90-minute performance. Mm. And that's the problem. He gets so many crosses out there that you'd think after four or five, he'd get, you know, he'd get his eye in a little bit. But it just seems to be, in a lot of SPL games especially... We, how many balls he put into the box and we just waste. And that was Ju- Juventus. I mean, they couldn't have stood back any any further yeah. than what they did. Yeah. They were camped on the 18 yard box for a lot of that game yeah. because they had a three-goal cushion so they didn't, and then a, then a five-goal cushion. But that was when you put one of those crosses in mm. you know, and someone gets on the end of it, that's how we score. And he was at fault for that goal too. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, yeah. You know, what, didn't he think there was going to be someone behind him? Mm. Yeah, it was poorly Just judged. get something on it, you know, just nick it a little bit. Yeah. There's a um, an article by Michael Grant in the today's Friday's Glasgow Herald, which um, this is about. Oh, I'm just going to jump across to Ambrose now. Uh, Neil Lennon told the driver of Celtic's team bus to leave for training without FA Ambrose after the defender was kept after kept the manager and his teammates waiting for ten minutes in their Turin hotel. And Ambrose was fined for a breach of club discipline after failing to show up on time ahead of the final training session for the club the morning of the match, and he had to get a taxi. To the uh, to the training session, so if jeez, I would never get again for Celtic if that's what the kind of strict rules they've got about getting getting down the t- down to the bus in time. Maybe he's got delayed jet lag. Could be from from two weeks ago. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe he's on Nigerian time or yeah. something. Just speaking back like to Izzy, like I kind of thought you know, there's always a chance I'd be score three goals anywhere you play, but the three personally I thought the three ways we're going to score, we we're going to like. The one goal I thought we had to get was from just a screamer, a la Joe Lely's yeah. really good shot. That was a lot closer than everyone realised. Yeah, but yeah. I thought the three I was to score was one of those type of ones, or like a free, like a really excellent free kick. Mm. Another one would have been from a corner, and it seemed like every time he put the ball into the box, there was a free kick against us for God knows what reason. Mm. And the third way was I thought we would get probably one or two, maybe three maximum chances, where we actually got them on the break properly, and someone like George, that's why I was so looking forward to George playing, as the outlet player and doing exactly what he did, hitting the byline and crossing it, crossing it, and it turned out that all the, we actually had three opportunities to score, 
light that way, but we just the luck wasn't there, or you know we just didn't quite get there. Well, Effie Ambrose seems to think that the goal, the mouth of the goal, is actually on the ground. Mm. Um, his head is oh. the last two games. I, I think I'm just going to call him Effin. Effin, Effin Ambrose. Because <laughs> that, that, as Neil pointed out in that interview, we were trying to play. <laughs> He headed the ball twice, once at home and once away. Yeah. From f- from four yards. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, you just that's you can't go on about wanting to play in the Premier League if you're doing that. Yeah. That's just a timing thing. All you could do is watch the ball and jump. Yeah. And it was the other thing was it wasn't being challenged by anyone. No. no. If you see Bale's, I hate to go back to you know the English sort of thing, but Bale's header in the UEFA Cup, the Mickey Mouse Cup this morning, as a ripper. He was under pressure, timed his jump perfectly, and just nailed it. Yeah. He, had, you know, Effin had bloody stage fright. He shit himself. He um, will look back on this um, home and away league against Juventus and not be uh, not be so pleased about his performance because it's been an absolute nightmare for him. And even like what you're saying about the wings, when he came on in the second half, he completely ruined Forrest's game. Yeah. He kept out there wide, like where Jamie should have been. Yeah. And when he got the ball, he like, what am I going to do? Yeah. What am I going to do with this ball? Yeah. We t- would take t- 28,000 28, touches, touches yeah. and then pass it to Lily, who was next to him. That's what he would do. Yeah, well, I thought we were really pedestrian in the way we actually moved the ball about a lot of the times. Mm. Uh, I thought Common started well in bright and patches, but he went missing a lot, and then, all of, then it just became apparent that his only contribution was to have shots from 25 yards out and do... Or fu- longer. Or, or longer and do fuck all when there was probably better options on. Mm. It just, I think we, it show, we showed a lack of... Um, Experience at that level, yep. which is funny because you never notice that in the other games. Mm. They're really, I guess, they played beyond their age and their experience. Because let's face it, these guys haven't had much Champions League experience. Nah. Almost maybe they didn't have a, a lot of belief, maybe as well. Like, I reckon that's, you, that's it. You would think wouldn't be the case because I mean, you can, you, you got you can remember, you know, after we got beat at Liverpool, you know, that was going way, way back in the UEFA Cup, you know. The UF Cup run in 2003. Was it 2 0? We got beat at home. You were there, pre. No, we drew 1 each. 1 each. And, and we, fi- ne- we needed a score away. And the first thing Martin O'Neill said when they got into the rooms was, right, we're going to beat them in Anfield. Yeah. And this was only the fourth time, at the time, the fourth time that someone had beat, beaten Liverpool at Anfield in a, in a uh, in European Europe. game. Mm. So, and you'd think that Lenny, I mean, Lenny was pl- playing that game, I, was, I think. He was, yeah. Uh, but, you know, Lenny, you know, he's a cust- he, he would be. That, that would be one of his strengths as his man management and grooming mm. the boys up. So you'd think that, you know, you just you didn't get the one goal. That's what we needed in the first half, to get that one goal. Yeah, Lenny believed, but no one else did. Mm. Maybe, well, Jello, I mean, Jello, he played out of his skin again. He, yeah. They, they played well up to the box. Mm. And then they went, well, you know, that final step. The difference was Juventus got two chances, mm. two half chances, and mm. took them. Five total over the two, two legs. Yeah. We had umpteen. Chances and never took one. Yeah, like uh, Gary Hooper not sort of extending his foot enough to that sharp cross from Sammy. Mm. I thought, and I think you said at the time um, when he missed it, and he should have scored that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and he's good at that. Like he's sco- he's, he's scored from better. tougher positions. He did it one against the Huns that mm. two seasons ago when we when we, Easy, did, yeah. when we did win the league, you know. Um, and you know, you sort of sit there, and, and this is harsh, I know, but it's like saying, well, you know, Gary Hooper, you want all this fucking money to go play in Europe, mm. or sorry, play in England. And you can't even score from two yards out. Yeah. That's exactly the thing, though. You like kill they, yourself. I mean, he, you can't blame... He didn't do anything wrong during the transfer window. He didn't say anything. But guys like Effie Ambrose, he says, oh, I'm really flattered that Liverpool will come calling all this type of stuff. Yeah. Well, you're not going to play well in the, biggest, in the biggest game of your career. And guess what? Liverpool win the Champions League this year. Yeah. Mind it, not even the last 16. So yeah. if you want to play for these Diddy Club... Not Liverpool Diddy Club, but these Wiggins or whatever in the world... Well, you have to start start scoring goals in these type of games. Yeah. And if you don't, well, you can't really complain about where you're playing at all. I think there was two parts. I mean, Juventus did exactly what we thought they'd do. And it was almost like they dulled the Celtic team into, you know, look, boys, three down. Yeah. Just, you know, mm. just behave yourselves. Yeah. And, like, we started off really well. And as the game went on, we just got slower and slower. And in the end, it was just like, Let's just get this game over with. Yeah. You know? not, yeah. not enough of them believed that they could do it. Well, I mean, five goals were scored against us. All five goals came from mistakes. Mm. All five goals came from mistakes. Mm. And that just... Yeah. We just got punished. But it just shows... It like, does show you the class of Juventus. Like, they get, if you make a mistake, they're not going to not score, you know. They're going to yeah. punish you for doing that. And yeah. That's what happens at that level. I um, Let's talk about some positives. I thought that Joe Ledley, Beer and Kyle... 
both had outstanding matches. Yep, Kyle, was, it was great to see him back. That was back to form. It was terrific. Yeah. Yeah. He's That's, just tenacious. And it's really important if you know, if Wanyama goes at the end of the year, Kyle's going to be like, get the guy in the middle again. So yeah. he, he's done, he did so well in his first year playing for us. Yeah, he, was the, he was the man. Yeah. So especially those tricky, these really, really tricky qualifiers coming up in... Um, June, July, wherever they are, yeah. he's going to be the man that's going to be having to help us out there a lot. Yeah. Especially if Scott, Scott Brown's coming back from injury and all that type of stuff. Um, and uh, Joe Ledley, I just, you know that cliche, who's the, the, first, the first name you put on the team sheet? Um, <laughs> I always do that joke. Uh, someone said about Alan Ruff. He was always the first name I put on the team sheet. That <laughs> was <laughs> fucking number one, you dickhead. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. Neil Lennon can say, oh, I'm manager, I'm going to the top. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, but I do think that Joe Ledley is the kind of guy that um, you should pick each mm. week. He's just fantastic. And he's fantastic in that classic way that you don't even notice how fantastic he is. So if you, do, if you happen to be noticing how fantastic he is, he's really, really fantastic, you yeah. know? Yeah. And he eats up games. Yeah. You, know, you can play him every week, twice a week. Yeah. All, all seasons. Long. And unusually, he's got injured this year, mm. um, which is, you know... It, but he, he came back from injury and just... Straight away, fit it in. Slot it in. Yeah. And why didn't he play? At home, I know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, that is, he was almost the. And it's quite funny because he's not create, like he's not the most creative player, but he he scores goals. Yeah. Oh, like for a midfielder. Yeah, he gets into the spot gets in those the, spots to yeah. score goals, and it, 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 he doesn't look the most technically gifted player because his left like left foot looks a bit awkward, mm. and he very rarely passes on his right foot at all. He's saying the left foot is a retard. Yeah. <laughs> they use their a funny part of their brain. Um, but you know, like, but he's actually a r- incredibly good passer of the ball and stuff like stuff like that. Does obviously all the simple things right. Yeah. So you just thought, God, if we had him in the first leg instead of instead of Ambrose. Yeah. What could have been, you know? And but let's talk about the two injuries: Victor going off at half time, and then Matthews uh, doing his hamstring. How much of an impact do you think that had on the outcome? Yeah, well, I think it threw the the balance out a bit mm. because it, it restricted Lennon to. I mean, I think it was always going to bring. Jamesy on at some point as that shock thing, but it, he had to wait a little bit longer because if he had picked up another injury, then mm. he's restricted again. So yeah. it made a big difference. And Victor was playing well. Yeah, yeah he's Victor. playing brilliant. Yeah. But as Calm said, you know, like under was not that much pressure. Like Juventus weren't really no. throw him in forward, were they? No. I mean, a few times they were. Half of our guys were up the other end. The good, sorry, the good thing maybe about Matthew's injury is he might miss some of the, the international football. Mm. Which is good because he might have to be rested for that. So, mm. well, I mean, we'll talk about this in a bit later. But those well, qualifiers are he's going to miss a lot because he really twanged his. Yeah, yeah, he looked like he was yeah. in serious pain. Yeah. Well, and you just wonder what the um, what the sports medicine. I think it's a lot better now, but what the sports medicine is quite like over there. How they? I think it's mainly Iron Brew and um, Scotch Pies. Well, they, they got this new thing. Well, it's not a new thing, but I know it. Uh, better dates. <laughs> <laughs> I know at least town they've got um like those. Either spas or ice water, ice water bars, what you, yep. you know, yep. but they've got like a treadmill in it. Oh, right. Yeah, so you walk, so you keep moving. And they've also got those um, in an actual a treadmill. They've got this like hyperbaric chamber or something that just goes around your body. Okay. Down. Oh, okay. So obviously they're you know leading there, but you just hope that. And were they still brand new when you, you seen them? Because they've been there for about two years. I don't get it. This ice bath you're talking about with the treadmill is it brand new looking? Oh, I don't know. I they might have it, but are they actually using them? That's a good good point. Good question. Um, the uh, there's a bit of a furor actually speaking about that. Um, you know the heat lights they use to keep this the, the pitch at Parkhead yeah, yeah. Um, green throughout the dark mon- winter months. Those light, oh, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah put, um, there's the a girls got cancer. No, no. The, all the girls apparently they work in the office in the um, in the superstore down there trying to get fake tans and sit in line underneath them. <laughs> You know what? That wouldn't surprise anyone in Glasgow. <laughs> That's what, if, it, if, you, if, it, if you ever go into the Celtic Superstore, all the women there are orange. <laughs> <laughs> you can switch the lights off, you can still see us. They're a healthy bloke. Like, yeah, I know. It's like Oompa Loompa Land. <laughs> with bleach blonde hair. I don't know. What's with that? I don't know. Anyway. Um, the scheme girls. <laughs> <laughs> Up the scheme. Like Julia. Um, now, George Samaras, I read some remarks on, I think, e saying he they thought he played quite well. I thought Georgie had a stinker. I thought he played shocking, except for that one the good thing he did. Yeah. When uh, he got to the bottom. Just didn't look interested at all, did he? He, yeah. Said another world. Yeah. 
he looked like he. I don't know if anyone out there has ever watched an episode or not an episode. Watched the film, the Wes Anderson film, The Royal Tenenbaums, when the scene where Richie Tenenbaum, uh, the tennis player, just decides he has a nervous breakdown at the Wimbledon final. He just he just chucks it in. That's what Sammy looked like. He just was completely disinterested. He looks so slow. I was waiting for him to take his shoes and socks off and just sit down and have a, have a rest. Yeah, it wasn't his best, was it? No. Do you remember well, when I we... think he had, before the game, he had one of the best quotes, though, because he said that, remember Greece? Yeah. No one gave us a chance. The film? <laughs> yeah. Do you remember when we were playing Dad one, like when I was like under nines and you were coaching, and one of the kids just sat down and started making a sandcastle in the yeah. middle of the... Uh, the cricket so <laughs> <laughs> And the ball got kicked uh, through it, he started cracking the shits. Uh, well, fair enough. No, it wasn't Hayden, it was uh, the other the weird other, kid. Another retard. Who ended up at your school, by the way. Not um, Declan. No, 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 no. His name really? <laughs> no, he, he majored in sport and uh, in music. <laughs> well, that all makes oh, sense. yeah, that bloke, yeah, he was weird. There was a nice castle he made, though. There was a kid that used to play... Uh, oh, a no. moat and everything. <laughs> well, it was raining. He got a protected castle. Couldn't get him off the pitch. I was trying to get another player and he's building a moat. I'm after a defender, not a moat. <laughs> I remember there was a kid that played for... Um, uh, Warrior United who was playing with young uh, your cousin young uh, young Kieran but this is when they were like 8 or 9 and he just stood in the middle of the ground with a fake gun shooting everyone going pew 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 pew, pew, pew. as kids are running past as the whole game runs past really? him, he's trying to shoot as many as he can pew 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 and then the ball came to his feet and it just stopped dead and the whole game stopped and looked at him and he went pew pew pew, pew. <laughs> shot, shot the ball and I said to someone better get a new ball <laughs> Oh dear. What was Kieran doing? Uh, Kicking shreds out of him? Yeah, he was probably. So frustrating. It was fantastic. And Rick, of course, his father loved it. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Look at that kid, he's loving it. He's got the right idea. Shoot them all. <laughs> Worked in Colombia. Oh. Um, <laughs> too, too soon. <laughs> I right. apologise to American listeners. Yeah, South American listeners. Yeah, all three of you. Um, you say South American? Yeah, it's so South American. I said Columbia. Oh, I thought you were saying... Sorry, I thought you were at the school. Oh, Columbine. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> that is out of line. No, <laughs> I mean, like, like, going, like... Escobar. Yeah. Okay. Who's shooting footballs in Columbine? They were just... No, I'm not going to touch any of that. Let's... Uh, do we... Oh, we now we've got some... Um, we've got some, uh, some tweets uh, from our loyal listeners out there. Um, we've got one from, uh, a, from a Sebco fan. Oh, yeah. We, we are now officially got trolls. I'm happy about that. Yeah, it means we're celebrities. Yeah. Uh, proud. Proud celebrities. No, I'm just proud of that. Oh. Uh, well, one of the uh, Scouse Tims, Packy Bonner, CSC, asked us, uh, what's the playing policy between now and the end of the season? This is a really good question. Yeah. Um, giving, poten- giving potential very short break, uh, re Champions League qualifiers. What would work? Potential uh, pitfalls, etc. Uh, he says he would rest about four to five first team regulars, spine of the team as soon as the league has been won. Whispers might even forgo the cup if we get to the final with those players. Right, so not even. Don't even play them in the final. I've always been advocating that we play the juniors anyway in the League Cup all the way through. And I'd love to have. Sadly, we were out of that. Yeah. <laughs> and even if you drew, like, if you, back in the days when you could, if you drew the Huns, just out of pure disrespect, I'd still play the kids. Yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. You could do it now. Yeah. You beat them now. Um, well, we kind of touched on this a bit last week, didn't we? We sort of said yeah. that um, we need to get ready for uh, our... We need to win the league first. Get that out of the way. Then yeah. Then you can pick and choose what game you want to rest players. Well, I, I've been told that we can't wrap the league up before I go there for the St. Mirren game at Paisley. So oh, I've got news for you. We've already won it. Uh, really? I must have missed that. No one gonna... else is going to get 62 points, which we've already got. So, <laughs> so do you think just don't bother turning up? They, all, they just keep beating each other. Forfeit, forfeit. Yeah. It's damn, damn it's like competitive. Why is like competitive? We don't know what's going to happen. I know. Who um, knew competitive? Um, again, I'm again. It's got to us again. Um, but three Champions League qualifiers seems a bit harsh. Mm. We did two last year. And I thought that was enough. <laughs> it's excessive, isn't it? Yeah. Are we going to play like someone like Arsenal again? I don't think so, no, because they draw it from the pot and it's, okay. it's all very technical. And, <laughs> and good, good answer, Frank. The, and, the black pot and the white pot. And, and dodgy. Yeah. It's going to be part of the pre-season. But instead of coming to Australia, they're just going to get well, a touring. Yeah, they might. 
Is that right? parts they come back. They come back on the uh, the nineteenth or the seventeenth of June. I think they start again. So they really actually haven't got much of a break from the season's end. But it is enough time to fit in a trip to Oz, I reckon. Yeah. I'd you know what? No, I'm happy for them to bring the youth team out here. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't want the players. I just, I just want. A, I just want a party. And Neil Lennon. Yeah. Just, and bring Alan Thompson over because he he knows how to party. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Um, I'm just looking at this article here um, about um, in the Herald on my uh, smartphone, and it's uh, what, the, the, what with the ABC? You can't say iPhone. Yeah. And um, mm. oh my god, that came up on the. I heard that. Jesus Christ, Callum, that's terrible. That wasn't believe, me. Can I believe you dropped your guts on the balcony? That was freedom. not me. That is not freedom. That was my father who that hasn't taken his pill today. Obviously, that is not freedom. Um, I was just looking at the um, um, the Herald uh, Scotland uh, news app, right? You know they do like links at the top for ads, and I'm on a Celtic article, and it's got at the top hotels near Vatican City. <laughs> Book here. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, why, why, what, the, what algorithms are going on there? They think that I want it's to go stay in a hotel. Isn't that sect- it's a sectarian ad? Yeah. It's it's well, it's not sectarian. It's a, st- it's a stereotype. It's a bad stereotype well, that, that I reject. See, I think so. We had this discussion after the game, but obviously Lisbon next year for the Champions League final. Um, we can do what the Huns did a couple of years ago and have their 140th anniversary 10 years after the 140th anniversary. Yep. So it's actually our 125th anniversary next year. Sure. So it all, it all lines up again. It does. It's good. I think that we're going to win the final next year in Lisbon. I don't got a problem with that. Yeah. We should play it at the final. I should play it at the ground. Stadium. Yeah, they need to build a stadium now. No, no. Just, just a, select, a select few people. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of, of uh, the fans. Yeah. How good were they for that second half? I oh, know, uh, totally go. at some of you vape pens. Oh, here we go, ten, 10 in a row. In a row. <laughs> About 800 verses of it. Are they just fantastic fans or are they just blind? I think a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, I think. I think they are fantastic because of the blind. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that was a long trip because I started getting tweets from them two days before the game. Yeah. So mm. I don't think any of them got any sleep. No. For two days. None of them rented a hotel room, so. No. Nah. That's fantastic. Well, that's a waste of money. Yeah. Let's um, and there was some good. There was a good picture. Of, uh, there was a good thing on doing the rounds of um, a Celtic fan chucking over a scarf over the barrier, and a Juve fan chucking over a scarf over the barrier. Yeah, that was lovely. Yeah, it was nice. Um, the Juve fan, not a very good thrower of the no, scarf. No, he really struggled, didn't he? He did. It wasn't that high. No, like just scrap all the scarf up your dickhead and throw it over the fucking roof. Well, I bet it was a bloody uh, bomb. It'd be. Yeah. Well, if, it, if it was a bottle... A flare. I meant to say flare, not bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Bomber. Um, let's, uh, let's... Speaking of the Vatican, let's do some Pope Watch. <laughs> let's have a chat to... Um, um, this is the new segment. Now, hold on, we have to do a... Um, see what she's got to say for herself. I want it. I want the answering machine to come up. Hello, hello. Well, in the old days, it would, because she'd be bingo. Yeah. yeah. She's not answering. What's she doing? I'm very busy. We should listen to her. Mum does have the best answering machine. Oh, come on. Didn't you say she was going to be home tonight? She, I taught her this morning. This call is being diverted. Oh, I'll leave it. Please. Uh-huh. No, that's the mobile. That's... Right. That's not right. Why didn't the uh, message come on? I don't know. Um... Well, while we're um, just waiting for this, um, I've got another couple of tweets from uh, from a couple of guys. Oh, okay, yeah, far away. And uh, we set we say we, the picture. The, I've got to check our Twitter Twitter page, the Rebel Podcast, uh, H P H. Yeah. And uh, we d- did a picture of the big flag I bought uh, Prefontaine. Yeah. And uh, Dean Wilson uh, has tweeted, "Callum looks like Superman. Tell him to sort that out." <laughs> That's because of my glasses. I'm thinking. Uh, very good. Yeah, Clark Kent, yeah. and then John C. John uh, F. Boy, sixty-seven. Yeah. Don't you love every Celtic <laughs> as sixty-seven, or eighty-eight, yeah. or nineteen sixteen? Um, Chucky, Rebel Podcast. Bradley Wiggins and Clark Kent. That's obviously my dad. Ah, that's nice. Someone's up to date. So, yeah. have, have you been taking drugs or mm. <laughs> something? Want to tell us? Peptides. Before? Let's uh, let's try mum at home as opposed to the mobile. This is uh I've got a bone to pick with you too, too. Who? You two. Us both of us. You two. Who? I think she's out. I think we've established that. Hello. Mum. Oh, how are you? I'm good. We, 
Uh, we're doing the Rebel Podcast, and we want to talk to you about two things tonight. What? We want to talk to you about... Don't uh, tell us a score. D- don't, tell, don't tell us a score, because we're going to watch it now. Oh, the, yeah. Which score is that? The Juventus game. Oh, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, no, we want to talk to you about the Juventus game. Did you... I, I'm assuming you watched it, because I haven't spoke to you since then. I did watch it, yeah. What, what, do, you, what do you think? Well, I thought they could have done better. They played well. But um, they just can't be that all in the net. They put it over under, you know. Yeah. Who did? You, who was? Uh, who was one of the better players for Celtic on the night? Um, I thought Sampras. Um, Sampras. Sampras. Yeah, Pete. Did a good game. Yeah, yeah, I thought he played all right. Yeah. What about Agassi? Both double faults. Who? Agassi. Who the hang Agassi? Don't be smart. Well, if, I thought Sam. I th- no, I'm agreeing with you, mum. If Sam Price had a good game, I want to know how you thought Agassi went. No, 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 no. What do you call the good guys? Um, <laughs> what do you call the great guys? Mum, I don't want to talk about racism on the on the podcast. This is the balcony freedom. We're well, what about his name? I forget his name. He played quite good. Uh, um, yeah, I thought they played yeah, they did as much the ball as any as the other team, but the the defenders guys are pretty tall, you know, and high, and, and they defended well. You know, they're all for the goal. It's hard to get, but... Mum, what did did Jerry think of the game? Oh, well, he never saw it. I know that, but what did you think (laughs) of the game? (laughs) That's mean, And he never... He didn't know about it. He just said, oh, well... He didn't think it was... Hard to ask. He need to have got four goals, blah, 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 blah. Right. Right. Is that... And they they were tipped at $8. When I rang him up after the game in the morning to tell him the score, telling us score that they had won, you know... So he was quite, oh, and then, of course, he pulled me back. Oh, the nurse told him that Celtic won? Yeah. <laughs> what a yeah, bitch. He was, he was saying, oh, I should have bet because there were $8 or something for a win. All right. <laughs> he was looking at the gambling part of that game. Clearly. Now that, now that he's a reconstructed range, uh, Rangers supporter. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he didn't think he would win. He's a queen. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, who do you think had a stinker? Who had a shocking game? Who? Who? <laughs> no. Oh, oh. oh, who had a shocking game? Yeah, it was a question. Oh, um, the took off. The took off. Oh, well, I'm not going to tell you because you haven't seen it. No, we have seen it. Oh, you have seen it. I thought you said I had no tell in school I haven't seen it. Well, well, that, for the first time, you actually didn't tell us a score, so... <coughs> well, I wasn't telling you the score. Um, <laughs> you told us Jerry's I story. Gary Cooper, he got taken off as well, didn't Gary, he? Gary Cooper, you <laughs> say. <laughs> Gar- Gary Cooper. What Gary movie is she watching? He got taken off, didn't he? Yeah. And uh, they put that other guy on. He was on pulled off by Lana Turner. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he faced into oblivion. I never saw him after he was on the park. I don't think, I don't think oblivion got picked. You what? I don't think they played Oblivion this week. He's injured, isn't he? Funny, funny. The guy that took Gary Hooper's place, I don't know him at all. Uh, Lassard. Lassard. Or as the other yeah. guy, as the commentator called him, Numi Numi. <laughs> yeah, whatever his name is, but I, I, I feel to find him after he got in the park, so I, I don't think he played very well. Right, okay. And Foster, uh, I don't think, played very well. The keeper? The young guy. Oh, uh, Jamie Forrest. Yeah, I didn't think that boss had played very well in goal either. No, he didn't work. I mean, he came out there with all hands and legs and shit. No. I didn't think he played that well. He used to, he used to defend, but then maybe they had better scoring goals, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, it was a big crowd there anyway, so I was quite happy with that. Could you hear the singing? Yeah, but I don't understand what they're singing. They were singing... Because it was in Italian. <laughs> what were they singing? Because it was in Italian. Juventus is a big support there as well, doesn't it? They did. A lot of them turned up, surprisingly, given the Centurion. Yeah, they did the Brazilian. Did you know, did your, your um, telecast, did they, when the singing was on, did they have subtitles to put it into English so you knew what they were singing? Hardly. Oh, you didn't, we got that. You didn't know it. I don't tell them any more lies. <laughs> Ask that Pope Watch. All right, let's, um, we want an update on uh, Pope Watch. Who's, who's, um, is the African Cardinal still the top dog running for... Oh, I don't know. They haven't really started yet, so you're just too early with that. But what about the betting, Mum? What's the uh, betting say? 
What does Jerry say about the bidding? Oh, no, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say that, but that is just past him. Right. Yeah. He doesn't get that in order to tell us very much, so... Right. What do you make of this report that, um, that, uh, well, well actually, what's going to happen to the po- Pope, well, Benedict, or... He goes into, he's going into, um, a close, I think, and he's just got to pray for his life. It's obviously a town in Poland somewhere. Yeah, what, um... You're going to, uh, but what, 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 if you ran into him down the street, what would you call You're him? You're not going to run him down the street because he's not there. He's going to be the monastery. But if you did run into him, what would you call him? You can't call him Papa anymore or whatever. Or no, it's Popey. called Pope something. Not called Pope. Cause some, some other name he's called. Now, is, yeah. he, is he back to just being a father? No, no, he's not a father. He's another father. name, which I can't remember. Faja? He's nothing to do with father, bishop, or cardinal, or Pope. Cards. Romanus or something. He's called, I don't know what he's called. He's called your Romanus. <laughs> something. Probably sure. Pope I X. Read it and I thought, oh. Yeah, Pope 2.0. But he has got a title. Right, okay. Well, you need to get to the bottom of that, Mum. Yeah, well, I'll wait to see what it's happens. It's a very good question. I think it's an important question because I, I will probably run into him on my travels and I know that if I do, it'll be, aw- it'll be awkward. Up. It'll be awkward because I'll go, hey, how you going? You'd, you'd spot him a mile. Yeah, and he'll be like, Prefontaine. What's going yeah, on, dude? What's up? <laughs> nice socks. Yeah. He's good to be the monster. Well, your slippers everywhere, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a pair as well. Check them out. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's made out of pure sheepskin. Funny, funny. Don't, don't mock the Pope, please. He, he's not the Pope anymore and you can't tell us what he is anymore. So I don't, I don't know how to mock him if I don't know what he is. <laughs> Oh, don't mock him, he's a human being. Just don't bother. Oh. So what else? Um, oh, okay. Is there anything you want to ask us? No. Okay. Did you win, did a, you, did you win well, a bingo this week? No, I wasn't at bingo this week, no. Yeah. Um, did you um, enjoy the game, did you? Oh, it's Mum's podcast now. Um, it was okay. I would have rather that we, that we won, obviously. Yeah, but we wouldn't have won. Four goals I thought we were going to win 5-1. I put it on the record. <laughs> so did you think they all played very well? Um, no, I thought um, there was only two or three players. Ledley, Kyle, Matthews, uh, um, Victor. Yeah, Matthews Victor. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, well, I don't know. All right. Well, I'll, uh, am I seeing you tomorrow night at your granddaughter's birthday, which you forgot to wish her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was going on Facebook, wasn't it? <laughs> going it's so long, days. <laughs> Mum, it's had about 10,000 hits already that you've missed, a, missed her birthday. <laughs> oh, gosh, that one. I'll tell you what. Well, just, I'll just put it down to the heat. Oh, minutes, <laughs> the heat. <laughs> <laughs> even, uh, you're not, even, even you're not buying that. Even I what? Even you're not buying that. It was very hot. I was up at some very Sunday. Really deep. And I totally thought it was a 10 for some reason. It was a 10 in my mind. I don't know why. It was raining in Warrigal, Grand. What? He, he said it was raining in Warrigal. Wasn't it a hang? I've only seen rain for blah, 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 blah. I think, no, Mum, that crystal meth, you've just got to ease up on it. You're doing too much of it. What? Crystal meth. Oh, that's a problem. Hell, if I was 80, I'd start taking crystal meth as well. Uh, <laughs> what have you got to lose? <laughs> no turning back now, baby. Oh. All right, Mum. It's All been right, a then. pleasure once again. Right. And, uh, I'll we'll, catch you tomorrow night. I'll see you tomorrow night. And don't mention Shona's birthday. And I won't. Well, it's going to be hard. It's, it's her party. <laughs> she, she should have had it on Saturday night anyway they would have remembered. How would you have would remembered? You forgot. You called because him. Because I would have invited you to come to Shona's birthday on Thursday. Yes, that's her birthday, right. I don't promise you don't have the It's getting worse. You better hang out, won't you? Uh, well, I'll be excused for that. Not to worry. All right, very good. All right, I'll catch you later. Cheers. Bye. 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 I like how she's easily amused by herself. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, anything else? i got one bone to pick with you, blokes. Oh, okay. Because it's just one of those things that uh, it's creeping in. People are bitching about... People on the phone, iPhones, yep. tweeting. Yep. Every time I looked at you two guys on Thursday morning, you were tweeting. I'm pretty sure you were tweeting to each other. <laughs> you got to watch the freaking game. If it play, you know, fair enough, Ross Candy, you can tweet as much as you like. Champions League. I watched it all. Last 16. I watched it all. You were missing shit. I was taking notes you for were the miss- game. You were missing shit. I was watching it 
while wait reading. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. You can do it. If he gets, gets the ball and he's going to cross it, you know what's going to happen. <laughs> someone was but, tweeting me. The, so, Dad, someone was tweeting me in Scotland that they were watching the game and they were telling me what was going on. So I needed to watch. I needed to, well, you needed to, yeah, you yeah. needed to tweet, yeah, because you might have missed, missed something. something yeah. Then you could watch it. Maybe. I did take notes, but the, you, good point there, Frankie boy. There should be a, a minimum fine there of uh, loss of license. <laughs> what tweeting license? It's tweeting license. Because yeah, two percent of the population who actually do tweet. It'll be pissed off. Did you t- did you make a note of that on your phone? And, and if you did, to talk about the time, what size font was that? <laughs> Massive. <laughs> do you want to see it? I don't know how you get your oh, gone. Your font that big. Do yep. you know how to do that? I don't know how to do that. No. You can see it from oh my, my back God, there. Look at that. Takes out three pages. It does. I can see that. I can I can see it. New iPhone. People in, people in Paran can see that. Yep. Um, well, so any other any final thoughts? Oh, d- yeah, what, what do we do? We're with 45 minutes. Let's wrap this up, yeah? Yeah. yeah. We can talk about other things. I'm not going to talk about Ross County, are you? So? No, we're not going to talk about <laughs> Ross County. Who? Yeah. <laughs> My, that was a, see, I got, I, I, tried, I got a couple of retweets for that book. So that later. <laughs> I didn't even know that Ross County was up in the SPL. Someone told me no, we played was... Ross County. I thought, well, have we played them already? Yeah. That was, uh, I was struggling with that one. When's too. the draw for the Scottish so Scot- Cup? We've got the draw. Yeah, we've got Dundee. Dundee United. And when is that? And it's Hibs and Dundee. Dundee. Is it Dundee's? So both Dundee's have made it to the. Oh no, oh, I just made that up. Oh, okay. Um, in the other thing, when's the, when is it? Yeah. Well, the finals are saying the Champions League. That's why we had to get out of the Champions League. <laughs> well, it has something had to go. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, no. Plus, um, there's been a lot of travel if we're in the Champions League mm, down at that Wembley. Be, that'd be tough work. What's the guess? We don't hear that song again. Yeah. No, we're off to no. We're the Glasgow Celtic champions, and we're off to Ross County. Yeah, Ross County. <laughs> Ross County. <laughs> um, April, isn't it? Normally, when they have the. Um, Oh, I'm looking at the wrong button. Well, it's important we win that game. You, you, let's, let's, you make a valid point. Let's live on that. Yeah. Um, so that's what we've got to look forward to. Wrapping the league up and the uh, Scottish Cup semi, uh, semi-final? Semi-final. Semi, yeah. yeah. And a big shout-out to the, uh, is it the Gallagate Supporters Club? Yep. That we saw on TV. Yep. And we saw the famous Francesco Mullen. Right. Which was quite funny. And one Eye Joe? One, was on one Eye Joe? One Eye Joe wasn't that. I couldn't find him. Right, okay. Or, or John. And I'll okay. get smoking up somewhere. Well, big uh, shout out to our, uh, the, the the family, cousin Sean, cousin Kieran, and soon to be and the Mullins <laughs> and the Mullins. God say Julia. You know, you uh, you you you, you, <laughs> make, you, you make light of you make light of a very special situation. I just don't think it's fair on either of us that you, you know come on here and make gags about you know the nuptials or the the betrothal. The betrothal. Yeah, the betrothal. <laughs> That's a new word. Is she still can't down count. If yeah, if, she is. If my mum can make up shit, so can I. <laughs> Um, don't forget you can subscribe to the Real Podcast by going to uh, our the um, How Hell Media site there, and it's on iTunes and all that kind of stuff. You can follow us on Twitter, which is Rebel Podcast R H E B E L P H O D C A S T. Um, you can follow uh, me on Twitter, Prefontaine sixty seven. You can follow Frank on Twitter at Celts underscore eight. Did I get that right? Giants no. underscore right. Celts. Eight. Giants. Right. Never, ever going to get that right. That's right. And Callum is just on the Rebel Podcast thing. Um, and uh, don't forget to watch or listen to, rather, the, all the other How Hell Media um, shows. Including the boring ones. Including the boring ones. Um, is, and that, is that that one bloke that talks to himself? <laughs> <laughs> should we mention that? No, I don't think we should mention that. that. Like, cut that out. Um, I, I'm not even sure which one that, that bloke is that talks to himself. Um, there's about 500 podcasts now, so right. I just can't keep up. They should all get together. You, you, you know, you... They should get together and get on, and get on a website. That'd be a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll call it howhowmedia.com. And they'd have to meet in... The only place that Celtic supporters meet is Vegas. Yeah. Uh, North America. Yeah. Or San Fran every now and then. Um, and uh, we'll be back, not next week, but the week after, I think that's right. Yeah, maybe. Yep. And, uh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> take notes about Ross Kenny. Yeah, take notes. We'll talk to you about something else. Um, and thanks for listening, and have a good week, everyone. Hell, hell. Bye. All right.